Hello and welcome to theCUBE series here in the studios of theCUBE for the Google Cloud Marketplace Marvel series. I'm joined with Steven Orban, Vice President of Migrations, ISVs and Marketplace with Google Cloud, and Tamar Yehoshua, who's the President of Products and Technologies at Glean. Great to see you. Thanks so much John, for having me. What, what a, I'm looking for this segment, Glean's been really doing great. So congratulations to the team there. Steven, this series has really been about uh, your customers, partners, and the services you guys are doing, just the, the, the magic and the marvels that have been happening with Google. And again, your momentum continues to uh, thunder away. Uh, congratulations. This series is super important for people to watch, to get to learn and, and get informed. Yeah, so first of all, John, thanks so much for having us and big thanks to Tamar and the Glean team for really being on this journey with us. And it's been a super exciting journey and a, and a really exciting time for Google Cloud and an exciting time for our marketplace, really, as we continue to see significant growth for our ISVs, our software partners, who really lean in and make marketplace their default way to meet customers where they are on Google Cloud. And as we see more and more large customers make significant moves to Google Cloud for their digital and AI transformations, our backlog of committed spend, the commitments that those customers have made to move to Google has continued to grow with it. And, and customers really have two ways to satisfy those commitments. First, by consuming Google Cloud products or by having and uh, consuming one of the thousands of software companies and the ISVs on our marketplace. And as we've added more and more capabilities for ISVs to find and reach customers, including the fact that we, we basically sell alongside them with our field teams. So our field teams work hand in hand together to really help customers understand the ISV solution and why it works well on Google Cloud. We've also added the capability for customers to buy from the reseller of their choice. And we're finding that customers actually move their workloads to the cloud much faster when they buy from the right ISV at the right, right time and that our ISV partners like Glean, they're able to close larger deals faster and more often. But at the same time, being successful at growing with a marketplace is just like many things in business, you get what you put into it. So that's why we started the series. And, and again, thanks to Mark for doing it, yeah. to really shine a light on the ISVs who do this well, Glean is one of them, how they've done, how they've done, it, done it, to really help our customers understand why Glean is such a great choice, for customers looking to break down data silos and spread knowledge faster and really to accelerate how they're using AI faster to transform their business. And what you're going to hear, I think, from Tamar and Glean is that they've done all the necessary three things to really have a successful partnership with us on Marketplace. First, they build unique solutions that customers can only find on GCP. They're one of the most comprehensive search solutions out there to help customers learn from their data and build Gen AI applications, which everybody is doing these days very quickly. They market it really well, secondly, to our mutual customers, and they, they put it in the right place in their product, product experience with great collateral available for our respective teams, so everybody's educated on how it works. And then we engage in deep co-sell relationships where our field teams work really closely together to make sure we're solving our customers' toughest problems. That's awesome. Uh, Tamar, I want to get into the, how Glean thinks about the marketplace and, and, and how your growth has been accelerated by that. But first, let's, let's get some context. Uh, the Cube research on our side, we see you guys really rising up in the pack there in the marketplace. Uh, your growth is, 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 people are seeing that growth and congratulations. So explain what, is, what do you guys do? Because I think this is a great story people should know about. Let's get into what you guys do. And then I want to kind of drill into some of the marketplace uh, dynamics. Thanks so much, John and, and Stephen. It's, it's great to be here and to be working with you on our journey. So what does Glean do first? So Glean is a work AI platform. Think ChatGPT for your enterprise. We understand all of the context of your enterprise. We look at your Google Workspace documents, Microsoft, Office 365, Salesforce, Jira, uh, Confluent, any place where you have siloed data in your SaaS applications, we are able to search across all of them. We have two interfaces, a standard enterprise search where we can find information across all of your documents and a chat uh, GPT-like interface where you can ask questions in natural language about information in your enterprise. Like what is the status of this latest 
project? Who is the salesperson on this account? And you can get answers in that natural language with gener generative AI. So it, it break down, breaks down the information silos and it enables you to find information anywhere in your organization, which improves productivity. And we're finding customers are finding it incredibly high ROI to be able to work better and more effectively. That's awesome. And what's the main main problem that you guys solve for your customers? What's the big aha moment? What's the what's the secrets and the drivers behind your growth? So the first one is finding information. We all are stuck with information in different styles. You're like, where did this person send me this? Was it an email? Was it in a document? Was it in a Slack conversation? So you don't have to remember, you can ask Glean and Glean will find it. But we also have a platform. So in addition to that, we have a platform where you can build either through code or no code. We have APIs to all of the information of your organization. We build essentially a knowledge graph of your organization. So you can use APIs to build productivity apps on top of that, either with code or no code. We also recently introduced Glean apps where you can build with a workflow type builder, no code applications on top of the context of your organization to make yourself even more productive. That's awesome. I want to get into the marketplace. Obviously Google marketplace, Steve and I've been talking to their marvels, their leaders in, in the space. How have you guys been able to grow your business and, and, and accelerate your go-to-market uh, with Google Marketplace? It's actually exactly like Stephen said. There are multiple components. One, first, build a product that people love and want to use, and then work really closely with Google on two things, the marketing. It's been really effective to co-market together and to sell. So our sellers are promoting Marketplace and the Marketplace sellers are promoting Glean and we're finding that our customers have an easier experience buying on the Marketplace. The procurement is easier. Finding us is easier. In fact, from Q1 to Q2, our number of deals on the Marketplace doubled. So we're super excited to see that because I think now we're really getting into a groove of understanding how the Marketplace can help with us and our, our customers. What's the, if I, I could just add, okay, so you if ahead. I could just add, add to that really quick, John. I think you know, first of all, Glean makes something that's super easy to sell, and as as Tamar mentioned, breaking down data silos. I mean, you talk to lots of enterprises. I talk to lots of enterprises. It's almost always at the top of their list. I have all this information. It's spread across all these different systems. I don't know how to make sense of it. So the, the value proposition is is very quick to resonate. And then they integrate with a bunch of our uh, products like BigQuery and Vertex AI. And in addition to that, a lot of the other ISVs that we work with. So oftentimes when we're talking to customers, they're, they're, they're taking a collection of things from our marketplace. And then the fact that they Glean can also integrate with Confluent, which a customer may have taken to help them break down that, that, that silo makes it super easy. So I, I think you, it, it's hard to overstate just how well integrated and how much it helps kind of break down the silos and how easy that is to position the customers together. Yeah, I think- For a little know, bit more uh, background on, on Glean, Glean started in 2019 as an enterprise search solution, which was using AI. So using AI technologies like Burton, early ML models and vector embeddings for our enterprise search. And it was built fully on GCP, as Stephen said, using BigQuery and using all of the, the GCP components. Then when ChatGPT came along, GPT-3 came along, we added the ability to ask questions in natural language and to generate answers. And we are then moved to using Vertex AI in addition. And we, uh, we allow customers to use Gemini 1.3 Pro as well. So we have taken advantage of pretty much most of the GCP stack and it's worked ex in extremely well for us. You know, tomorrow I love I love the the fact that you guys are just a cutting edge startup. And you know, the joke years ago, Stephen was 10x engineer. You know, with now you're seeing with AI and startups, you can do a lot more with with what's out there at scale. And I think it, it shouldn't be underestimated. I want to unpack the the, the marketplace's economics and the workflows. I mean, we'll get to the integration in a second. I think that's an even more interesting part. But there, tomorrow, as you know, it's not just a directory to host a catalog. It's not like that. It is that although it is listed there are real economics here and, and there's joint marketing. So it, it's, but it's scalable. What, what's the, how do you see this as a modern approach uh, for startups? Because why wouldn't I want to take advantage of joint selling and you know, clean out the credits, you know, budget flush or you know, 
these are real economics. Talk about these how this is a modern, scalable solution. These are real advantages. If a customer already has allocated, uh, allocated money for GCP and the fact that we can tap into some of their commits is, is huge. And the fact that the sellers from GCP can work with us to sell Glean alongside what they're selling for, G, uh, for GCP, this makes it easier for our customers. And that's really the, what you want at the end of the day. You want a better customer experience. You know, the integrations become, again, my favorite part is the integrations because that's also unique. First of all, economics. I'm a big fan of the marketplace. Everyone knows I'm pretty biased on that, especially your modern startup. But the key to success is we're in a heterogeneous world, right? The integrations are critical. Can you guys share uh, the integration uh, aspect of this, the technology, the innovation, what's different, uh, what's unique about it? How does it work? Yeah, so what we do with Glean, uh, there's there's a lot of sensitive data that Glean has in that we ingest all, we have over hundred connectors to your enterprise data. And we want to make sure that our enterprises feel comfortable and so they can host the data in their GCP project. We have a Glean hosted, which is our SaaS offering, all single tenant, we can host it, but we can also host it inside the customer's GCP. And that's incredibly valuable for them. It's more secure, they feel more comfortable with it. So that's a very big selling point for us. Yeah, I would just add to that, John, I think the, the, the flexibility that Glean offers, whether it to be a managed solution that, that Glean hosts or something that a customer deploys and manages in their own tenant, is, as Tamar points out, is a big differentiator, so much so, um, we actually work together with a very large financial services customer that uh, Google Cloud was already talking to in Asia Pacific. And they had the need to break down their silos and be able to create more knowledge, easily accessible for their knowledge workers. So we, we our teams kind of quickly brought in the Glean team who was able to showcase not only how their solution is awesome, but how it can actually run. This is a, a regulated entity, how it can run in their own GCP project, uh, which they are now starting to uh, adopt across uh, their business to, to really give their, their knowledge workers much more fingertippy access to data that would otherwise have taken them hours, if not days, uh, uh, to find. So particularly in regulated scenarios, that value proposition re resonates quite a bit. I find the, uh, the Glean use case very um, interesting, Tamar, because data is critical and security of that data is, is, is awesome. But after you're done training the data, inference and fine tuning become really important uh, aspects of how data evolves going forward. Obviously governance and cataloging of it is really key. This is a key to the security aspect, which is a big part of the enterprise. How does that fit in uh, to your relationship with Google? Does that uh, highlighted by them? Is it obviously super important? It's going to be built from day one. Uh, sensitive data is always that enterprise feature. <laughs> it's the first conversation. <laughs> yeah, this is something that Glean has spent five years working on, making sure that we adhere to the permissions of all of the SaaS apps that we leverage making sure that the data is secure. And we're a RAG-based architecture. So what we do is we read in the data, data we adhere to whatever permissions that the original data was in, whether it was in Google or Salesforce or Slack, with a private channel, a public channel, what the permissions on the records were. We understand those and we adhere to those. We ingest those into our index. And as I said, the data is stored within a customer's GCP project, if that's what they choose. And where a rag based solution is that we take the query and we match it to the content in order to find the best snippets. And then we use that in the generative AI. We match that with generative AI to get an answer in natural language. So we are not fine tuning our own models. We're using more of a rag based architecture, but for the search for the retrieval, we use vector embeddings where we do fine tune for a specific organization to make sure that the search is customized and personalized for that organization. So help me understand the RAG versus the workflow. So you're using the RAG retrieve augmented generation with Google using their kind of some of their technologies, but this is the case where the customer brings their data to the table, right? Is that how it works? The data is the customer's data. The data is from the SaaS apps that we ingest and that we um, we understand, so it's all the customer's data. 
And then we use that, we built a hybrid search engine where the hybrid search is we have keyword-based search and we have um, semantic-based search to make sure that we understand and we get back the best answers. And we use that through the, through the system. So yes, it's all the customer's data and it's secured in the customer's yeah. GCP project. Yeah, I love, I love this, this implementation because it's, it's the best of both worlds. Okay, so Steven and Tamara, let's get both of you to weigh on this. How does the combined Google um, uh, Glean solution provide unique value to customers? To connect the dots here, because you got a couple things going on on both sides here. I'm yeah, not I gonna got start. <laughs> go ahead, sorry. Steve, sorry. Tomorrow, you, jump ball, whoever wants to go first. I, I was curious how Steven would say the unique value of Glean, but for, for us, the unique value is that we really understand the context of the organization. We understand what is going on in the organization because it's not only getting the content, but it's getting you personalized answers. So for example, if I um, need an onboarding document for somebody in my team, Glean knows who's on my team, who my peers are, what onboarding documents have been used most recently for members of my team. And they won't get an onboarding document that someone, for example, from sales was using. They'll know that the onboarding documents of people in my team were the most relevant. So we understand the content. It's personalized to you who's searching for it. It's semantically relevant and it gets you the answers that you need across all of your information. So our customers just find it um, the best quality results, plus the they don't worry about privacy and permissions because it is fully secure. Yeah, I'd, I'd say a couple of things just to add to that. So at, at Google, Google Cloud, we view our role as we're in the customer outcome business. So we want to understand what our customers' hardest technical problems is. Google's mission overall is to, to solve computer science's hardest problems. And we kind of inherit that in cloud by helping our customers solve their uh, hardest technology challenges. And we kind of talked about some of the key levers here already, breaking down data silos, but I'd also say it's very timely what Glean does because every conversation I've been in with the customer for the last at least year and a half, uh, you know, we have over-unders on how long it takes before Gen AI comes up as part of that conversation. And it's usually within the first five or 10 minutes. What is the Gen AI? How are we using it to, to change our business? And Glean is just a wonderful shortcut to that because you can take all of the data that is spread across in silos in a customer's organization very quickly, connect it up to, to, to Glean so it understands a lot of that content and then use it in, as, as Tamar said, a, a natural language interface and a, and a Gen AI interface to, to not just ask questions of it, to get kind of immediate gratification, but to also start to build applications and start to satisfy um, a lot of the pressure that these companies are under to continue to differentiate themselves and how are they going to use their own IP in a world where um, more and more Gen AI is going to be used to, to, to help companies, including their competitors, just move a lot faster. So it's just a super timely, contextually relevant um, partnership that uh, I, I, we're both getting a lot of mileage out of. So, so Glean is a marketplace customer, got that, but they're also, tomorrow used to be building on Google's cloud with integrations, and offering Vertex, right? Vertex, Gemini, you have, you're tapping into their capabilities. Is that right? Yeah, we, um, so the way that we work is we got customer gives a query and then we understand that query. As I said, we have the rag based architecture, we get the snippets and then we use models, the foundation models to generate the answer. And we work closely with Gemini to make sure that we will validate the latest model. So the customer actually chooses what model they want to use. So they can bring their own key. So they, again, if they have commits already with GCP, they can bring their key to Gemini and whichever model they want. They were, we were using Palm before, we still offer that. Now we offer Gemini. So we do work very closely to make sure that the models will be verified with our stack and so that customers can use those models. Awesome, great. And I, and I, do, and I do also want to build on what Stephen said about customers in that the biggest thing is that the biggest thing for, for us is that the customers are happy and they're getting what they need. 
And what's been really exciting, Stephen mentioned a bank in, in Asia, a large financial institution. There are also, there's so many customers that are joint customers. So I just wanted to take a minute to mention a few. So one that came out through the marketplace that we probably would not have gotten to, or maybe it would have taken much longer. Well, Simple was one, Confluent was another, Reddit was another. These are joint marketplace and Glean customers. There's a much longer list, but just wanted to mention a few. Yeah, it's good to get this customer. This is important because the customers ultimately vote with their, their decisions. And that we are at an inflection point. There's a secular trend with Generative AI. It's going to change the makeup of all applications and new applications. So what customers do is important. So you, you said Wealth Simple was one, Reddit, Confluent. What was their key uh, stories? What was the key um, thing? So I'm asking search, finding what you're looking for. What was the big problem that you solved? And what was the impact of their business? Finding information, so for example, well, simple engineers can be much more productive if they can find information when they're, for example, resolving an incident. So, or you're, when you're writing code, the majority of your time spent is actually not writing the code, it's doing the design. It's finding all the pre previous design documents. It's going through JIRA to understand the bugs that customers had. It's reading all of the documents. So when you can find that information faster and easier, it makes you much more productive. So what we do is we do surveys often for customers before and after. How hard was it for you to find information? And while some for example, most, most of the engineers rated very low in that it's really hard to find information and then rated much higher after Glean, much easier to find information, saving considerable time. And they did estimates of how much time it was saving, that the time saved uh, with Glean more than paid for the cost of buying Glean. And that's something that we see in a lot of our customers is that we are saving real time and we have real data that shows the improvement in the productivity for that's people using that's the touch time savings, you know, in these, these markets, sit, reducing the steps it takes to do something, making it easier, understand, and intuitive to use is a great business model. I have to ask, um, you know, Stephen, you know, back in the old days, silos meant, you know, databases, big data warehouses. Now silos are, you know, Slack, ch Slack chats, Jira, um, Google Drive. I mean, data's everywhere now. It's like millions of silos. So when you say busting down the silos, Tamar, do you mean, you mean like just unifying this data everywhere? That was a hunt and peck retrieval model in the past. I use hunt you know, and peck, that's the way I think about it. You're, you're absolutely right. The vast majority, it's something like 90% of data in organizations and it's in unstructured data, which is exactly what you said. It's in Slack or it's in Teams or it's in Google Docs or it's in Jira tickets or Zendesk tickets. So it's unstructured data that is all over the place. Your structured data in your data warehouses, your like product analytics, your business metrics, your uh, sales analytics. And so we will marry the two and be able to get, people will be able to query that data as well. But the vast use case and the vast majority of your data actually is in unstructured data. If you think about it, John, like traditionally breaking down, down silos, what would that have meant? So if you had 10 systems that you wanted to get data from, You'd have to understand how to get that data from all of those 10 different systems. You'd then have to write some interface to then copy that data somewhere centrally. Now you've just created a new silo, which is this new centralized uh, place. Now you have to maintain the 10 connections to all of those 10 different places. Every time Slack changes some interface, that's going to break. You're going to have to disrupt engineers or, or folks who had kind of did that. And Glean just comes and takes that off the table. They're, they're, they're kind of doing that all on, on, on the customer's behalf. And it's really kind of breaking down silos without creating a new one, which I think that's maybe been some of the challenges with prior approaches to this problem is breaking down silos by creating a new one. So it's super valuable in terms of a productivity improvement. Well, Tamar, I really like what you do. And again, enterprise search of yesteryear was one big structured headache, a lot of moving parts, a lot of legacy. You know, search is the killer app as it proves in the enterprise here. Um, what's changed the most uh, out there? Because, you know, it, it seems that AI is a gift for that old, the old crack the code on enterprise search, but you're not just doing enterprise search because now the user experiences are involved. Productivity can be quantified. Huge switch. I mean, the game is kind of still the same. Enterprise search, okay, bust down the silos, but the app is the user interface. That's the usability piece. 100%. I think there's another thing that's changed is, you know, 10, 20 years ago, before 
the cloud and before SaaS, a lot of your, your unstructured data was buried on-prem in a system where there were no APIs. So it was very hard to search across all of them. But then when you got to all the SaaS apps, and then everyone has APIs. So all of these SaaS apps have APIs because it's the customer's data, it's not the SaaS app's data. And so they enable the customer to access their data through APIs. And this enabled a whole nother generation of enterprise search because you could use these APIs. And then take AI, even before generative AI, when the BERT model started coming out and vector embeddings, it made it easier to build, you had the tools to build really good enterprise search. And so these were some of the changes that happened. And then people got used to, with ChatGPT, querying and querying a natural language and getting an answer. So this change on the consumer side enabled people to, on the enterprise side, get comfortable with it. I think you just nailed why you guys are so successful. I think this is a really nexus of a bunch of things coming together. And you know, if you think about it, it's like bringing stuff to the front lines from the bowels of these databases, like bring a, you know, unearthing the value uh, is awesome. So congratulations, this is just, again, highlights the market we're in. I have to ask you, Tamar, because you know, I'm always talking to startups out there and you guys are just you know, taking off big time. The mar things like the marketplace and integrations, what's going on in, the, in this modern era is super important to, to get studied up. They don't teach us in business school. This is not like out there. So what's your advice to other entrepreneurs as they look at building good product market fit, tapping things like the marketplace, what are some of the secrets? What are the special knobs you got to turn? I mean, he, Steve always says, oh, you got to do the one, two, three. I, I get that, but like, this is a game, this is an accelerant. I mean, why wouldn't you? This, talk about why it's important to, to leverage them, these new modern techniques. Well, first of all, advice to startup founders is the same as it's always been. You need to build a product that people need and they love, and you have to be solving a new problem. Some AI startups are taking the technology. How can I use this to build something cool? You really need to understand what problem you're solving for customers. That's like the most basic thing and that never changes, no matter what the technology stack is. So don't get caught up in the technology stack. Make sure you're focusing on the customer problem. And then once you know you're solving an important problem, distribution is key. Distribution is always king. And partnering with a place like the marketplace is so important for distribution. So if you have that product that people find valuable, you need an outlet to make it easy for customers, not only to discover you, but also to buy your software. And that's why the, the marketplace is so important. I really appreciate your time, Stephen. I'll let you wrap up. Final thoughts, marketplace, what's new? Coming out of the summer into the fall window, a lot of action happening. Market is interesting. It's, you know, it's, still ramping up on the AI side, but you know, the pressure on productivity, the pressure on uh, go to market's huge. Yeah, which is why I think, you know, our, our partnership with Glean is, is so fast growing. Having said that, it's still early days. And I think what I'm most excited for is, is that the best is, is still yet to come. We've built a, a great foundation and a partnership uh, here with Glean and we've landed some marquee customers uh, already together. Tamar talked about several of them, but uh, we also have an exciting pipeline. And you know, many more customers were going to be talking about how they can break down their silos and build their Gen AI applications more quickly. And as I think about how we're also evolving the marketplace and our field uh, incentives and behavior to, to have more and more um, conversations with customers about what third-party software they're using as we're helping them transform and adding things like our reseller capabilities, which we brought online earlier this year to not just help clean scale through us and, and, and our field sales teams, but also all the large resellers like CDW and WWT that are out there. Uh, it's just a super exciting time to be in the space. And I think that the best is still yet to come between Glean and us. Awesome, well, congrats tomorrow. Thanks so much for coming on, Steve. Always good to see you again. I love these waves and every new wave brings new brands, new, new innovations that move the needle. Thanks so much for sharing. Uh, okay, come on, on the queue, appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having us, John. Okay, this is theCUBE's presentation of Google Cloud Marketplace Marvel series. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in theCUBE studios. Thanks for watching.